In October 2019, we convened an expert workshop to consider three different scenarios about future security challenges. I helped to facilitate a simulation uh, that involved an infectious disease outbreak, um, the resulting pandemic. In that particular case, it was looking at a coronavirus. How would the world grapple with the outbreak of a brand new virus for which we didn't have treatment, we didn't have cures, and that was rapidly transmissible? We also supposed that the economic damage would be immediate and sweeping, that countries would try to arrest that damage, but that public trust was the issue that we most needed in this response. So far, to be honest, we see very little difference between the way that we played the scenario out and the way that things are transpiring now. The simulation was designed to kind of help current former policymakers think through what are some of the obstacles to our ability to respond to such a large uh, global disaster? How do we get our hands around the magnitude of the crisis? the scope of the infection, as we do in any crisis. What does the decision maker want to know? How bad is this? How bad will it get? Who's most affected? How do I prioritize? There's only one way to do that in an epidemic or pandemic as we have now, which is to have an appropriate amount of disease surveillance and diagnostic capability to scope the problem. Countries that have imposed strong disease surveillance capabilities and rapidly ramped up testing are better able to understand how big of a threat this disease is posing inside of their own territory. It is about public communication at this phase, and we're seeing real uh, different approaches to that in different countries, and it's affecting the health outcomes in those countries. So those countries that are proactive, that have good messaging, that have citizens who are listening to that message are coming out of this much quicker. So if you look at South Korea, if you look at Hong Kong and the fact they were hit hard early but seem to be recovering quickly, a lot of that is lessons they learned from the SARS outbreak. When we did this simulation, one of the things we talked about was really recognize that a crisis is not necessarily quick. They can unfold over a long period of time and be episodic in terms of having kind of long moments and short, very intense moments. The reality is we've been experiencing that lately uh, in terms of short, intense upticks that require rapid decision making, quick solutions, but they occur in the context of something that actually goes on over an extended period of time and Americans are living that today. So crises can have this long, slow boil quality, um, and I think that's really hard to take into an account when you're doing simulations that naturally accelerate everything, make everything feel like, you know, you're gonna do it, and then it's gonna be over, and you'll either win or you'll lose. And that's not really how these things work.